In this section, we're going to start our work with exponential functions, and in particular, a special exponential function called the natural exponential function, which depends on a new number named e. So before I get to that, I want to talk a little bit about the number e, but in order to get to that, I want to go over some definitions with you. So first of all, some of the simple definitions that we have in mathematics, we just name things, like whole numbers. We say it's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so on and so forth. So it's a definition. All we do is accept it, right? Another definition would be Mr. McCaig. That's me. We don't really ask why. We just say that's the definition. Okay, then we get to a little bit more complicated things like exponents, and we say, well, 3 to the second power means 3 times 3. So 3 to the second power, we repeat that multiplication like that twice, and that's the definition for an exponent of 2. Now, we have some special exponents like the exponent 0, so we make a definition for it. x to the 0 is 1 for all numbers x except x equals 0 itself. So, as the definitions get more complicated, sometimes we have to add some restrictions on them. And then, as we go down this list, we see we even get kind of more abstract with things like i. The definition for the number i is the positive square root of the, ne of the number negative 1. So i isn't even a real number because there's no real number to square to get negative 1, so we make up this notation for it. So things tend to get a little more abstract and a little bit more complicated as we progress in mathematics. So what do we do with definitions? We just accept them or we just say yes to them. That's really all there is to it. So let me go to the next board now and show you a couple more definitions. Here are some more definitions. Here's the definition for the derivative. The derivative of the function y equal f of x is the limit as h goes to 0, f of x plus h minus f of x over h. So there's really no easier way to say this. This is the definition of the derivative, that thing that you've been working with in the last couple of chapters. So when it comes to derivatives, that definition even gets more complicated. So when you look at it like that, it's not too hard to take the definition for this new number e. So e, it turns out, its definition, as you'll see in this section, is the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 plus 1 over x all raised to the x. Now, as you read through the book, you're going to see that there's a nice table and graph and some explanations to kind of give you an intuitive feel for this right here. But this itself is the actual definition. No easier way to say it. Now, it turns out that this comes out that we have a decimal approximation to this that we can use. But in any case, if somebody asks you what's the number e, it's this. It's a limit. But that's not too hard to take, right? Because we already have derivatives that we've been working with for a while, and they're defined in terms of limits. So you can see, as our mathematical ability goes up, the definitions that we have tend to get a little more abstract and a little more complicated. Now, here's something interesting about the definition for the number e. This is the way we use it in the book, but there's an alternate definition with it, which looks like this. Very similar looking definition, except this is the limit as x goes to 0 of 1 plus x to the 1 over x. So let's see if we can just intuitively kind of see how these two expressions right here are actually equivalent. As x goes to infinity, where does 1 over x go? Well, it goes to 0. As x goes to 0, where does x go? Well, it goes to 0. So both those parts of those two different expressions in these limits right here, each of those numbers goes to zero. Well, as x goes to infinity, x goes to infinity here. And as x goes to zero here, one over x goes to infinity also. So that part of the expressions is going to the same place in each of these limits, even though the expressions are a little different. And what's the relationship between this and this? reciprocals. What's the relationship between this and this? Reciprocals. So if that's good enough for you to see that these two expressions are equivalent, that's all you need to do. Just kind of look at it that way. Both of these numbers go to zero, these expressions go to infinity, and the relationship between the two expressions is that they're reciprocals. Now if you need more of a proof than that, um, I'll go to the next board and show, show that to you. But if this is good enough for you, you can just stop right here. Here's our new definition for the number e. Here's an alternate definition, which I'm going to use a little bit later in one of the videos that comes up later in the chapter. 
But in any case, these are definitions. All we do is accept them, say yes to them. That's just the way it is with the number E. There's no easier way to define it. Let's go to the next board though. Now, for those of you that would like to see an actual derivation of how this turns into this. So here's our definition from the book. E is the limit as x goes to infinity, one plus one over x to the x. And I wanna take this and show that it's equivalent to this right here. Now, pretty easy thing to show, all I have to do is this. I'm gonna make a little substitution right here. I'm gonna say let u be equal to one over x. I can do that whenever I want. I just put a new variable in, it's the equal to the reciprocal of x. Well, if that's true, if u is equal to one over x, then that also means that x is equal to one over u. They're just reciprocals of each other, that's all I'm saying. And for any real number x, every, every real number x has a reciprocal, so I can do that. So if I make this substitution right here, now this expression becomes the limit as x goes to infinity, well, x is one over u. So the limit as one over u goes to infinity of one plus one over x is u, and then x itself is one over u. Okay, so pretty, pretty good so far, no problem. So as one over u goes to infinity, where does u go? That is this part of this expression, how can I rewrite it just in terms of u? Well, it's pretty simple. The only way one over u can go to infinity is if u goes to zero. So this is actually the limit as u goes to zero of one plus u to the one over u. And then our choice of the variable here really doesn't make any difference. I can use any variable I want. So I could say if I wanted that this was the limit as z goes to zero of one plus z to the one over z. The choice of the variable doesn't make any difference as long as it all, all of them here have the re same relationship to each other that the variable u up here does. So this expression right here, this expression is equivalent to it and that's equivalent to this. The limit is x goes to zero, one plus x to the one over x. So changing this limit into this limit is very simple. I just replace one over x with u and let u be equal to one over x, so x is equal to one over u. So here is the non-intuitive kind of proof of their derivation of the whole thing. If you go back to the board that we just worked on, you can see kind of the intuitive proof of this. But in any case, this E is a very important number for us, and we want to be able to use both of these definitions. Now, is E ever going to be as intuitive to us as a number, say, like 5? No, it's not going to be. It's an irrational number. It doesn't have a nice, simple definition. This is its definition. So it's always going to be a little more abstract to us. But we, we're going to find a nice decimal approximation to it, and we're going to be able to work a lot of problems that involve the number E.